TEDx talks are all about serendipity, opportunity, and inspiration. Serendipity has brought me here. Opportunity gives me the chance to convince you of something that some people may not think is a fact. And inspiration is what I'm hoping to give you. I'm going to inspire you by telling you the story of my life. It's a bit of a roller coaster, so hang on. It's going to take 15 minutes to get through my entire life. But like you, I started off liking animals and plants. I had tadpoles in jars as kids, like many of you here. I was fascinated by animals and plants, and I read books, and I looked at things. I subscribed to a magazine about wildlife, even back in the 60s. Then somehow I metamorphosed into something else. Just like you in the front will metamorphose into a job and a different life after you leave school. And those of you who have already left school have metamorphosed into something else. It just took me a little bit longer than most. It wasn't until I was 25 that I ended up in the Amazon rainforest chasing crocodilians, thinking, oh, this is cool, this is fun. I'm finally uh, growing up. I've actually found something that would inspire me. Of course, while I was swimming those streams trying to catch small crocodilians, sounded exciting, sounds scary, it was actually boring as anything. Crocodilians don't do anything, they just sit in streams. But all around me were these frogs. And so, crocodiles are cool, but these damn frogs just kept crawling all around me. So, I ended up studying frogs for the next three years in the Amazon with Bill Magnuson, who gave me the opportunity. I took that opportunity. I found out that there was an amazing diversity. There were more than 50 species of amphibians within one kilometer of my campsite. So Bill gave me the opportunity. I was young and handsome back then. I had other opportunities, but this was where I was going. 25 years later, I've done nothing else. 25 years of studying frogs. Who would have thought when they were lying in a beanbag at the age of 17 that they'd spend the next 25 years studying frogs? Not many, right? But hopefully, I've learned something. Other than frogs are awesome. We all know that. So, what have I learned? I'm going to share a few sort of little facts and figures. Amphibians are pretty amazing. They were the first vertebrates to walk on Earth. And that you won't recognize because it's a salamander and we don't have any in Australia. But the original amphibian 350 million years ago walked out on land, it was from a fish ancestor, and it probably looked something like that. We now know that there's over 7,000 species of amphibians in the world. And the number is growing all the time as we continue to discover new species. That's pretty amazing. Over 6,000 of those species are frogs. Now, frogs are pretty amazing in their own right. They've been around for 250 million years. The type of frog that you see and know today has been hopping around on Earth for 250 million years. Now, that kind of makes Homo sapiens pretty insignificant. We've been around for 200,000 years. Hmm, Who's, what's going on here? Seven, over 7,000 species, 250 million years. Are frogs important? Who cares if a few frogs go extinct? Well, frogs are very important. They're an integral part of the food web. They play a very important role in ecosystems and ecosystem function. They're part of those feedback loops that Rod talked about for resilience. They do things like eat bugs and other animals that we don't like. They also get eaten by other animals we don't like, like snakes, bats, birds. So they're very important. If we don't have any frogs, and it may be a bit hard for you to see this, but there's a picture of somebody lying in the bath covered in bugs. Why? Because the frogs have gone. There's nothing but bugs for us to lie in the bath with. <laughs> so
So, frogs are pretty amazing. They're very special. They're very cool. And I hope I can convince you of that. But we, being anthropogenically inclined, we as humans, we love to think about ourselves. Everybody sees me in this T-shirt, they go, why are frogs important to me? It's all about me. Why are frogs important to humans? Well, frogs have been a source of knowledge and discovery for thousands of years. Not millions, like the frogs themselves. But you can see by the ancient sculptures and carvings in rocks and in wood that frogs have been important to humans for a very long time. They've helped humans for thousands of years in particular functions like getting monkeys out of trees. How do you catch a monkey? In the rainforest in the Amazon, that's about 40 meters above the ground. Well, what you do is you get this little frog that's hopping around on the ground that's bright blue. You get your spearhead and you rub it on the back of the frog. You shoot the monkey and bingo, the monkey drops to the ground and you eat it. Fantastic if you like eating monkeys. So frogs have been around and been useful to humans for thousands of years. More recently, as humans have continuously increased their impacts on the global environment, frogs have had another role of cleaning up after us. We put pollutants into the water, it eutrophies, the plants and things grow, the, the algae grow. Who comes along to clean up the mess? The tadpole. The infamous tadpole cleaning up after us, converting energy from water into the land. Frog products are also now extensively used in medicine and also in research. We've found antibiotic peptides, anti-tumor agents, analgesics, and adhesive compounds are just a few of the things that have come from frogs. There's a frog in Australia that after I've picked it up, I put my fingers together and it sticks like super glue. And there's a company that's currently patented that very chemical from a frog. And finally, as far as the me, me goes, Frogs are indicators of the environment. Frogs are telling us something, aren't they? Frogs also need clean air, clean water, and good food. Things that we might like to have ourselves as humans, perhaps. So if the frogs disappear, then there's a good reason for it. And it's all to do with good food, good air, and good water. So when my friend Phil Bishop from the Otago University came over to Australia to visit me, I said, I've got to look like that. No, I've got to look like that, as in I need a T-shirt like that, because this T-shirt tells you something. And ever since I've been wearing this T-shirt, I've been harassed by people nonstop. Why? How can you demonstrate that? What does that mean? This T-shirt says something very, very simple and fundamental. Healthy frogs means healthy humans. But there's a problem. We've got frogs disappearing all around the world. In Australia, we had one of the most unique form of reproduction of any amphibian in the world. It was the gastric brooding frog. The female was never observed, but is believed to have eaten the eggs of the eggs developed inside her stomach into little tadpoles. They swam round and round in circles inside her stomach. They eventually metamorphosed into little frogs and hopped out of her mouth. Incredible. When it was discovered, it was all over the world in the newspapers. That species has gone. It has not been seen since 1981, over 30 years ago. Is that scary? 200 species have disappeared. Homo sapiens are one species. We are the only in the only species in the group Homo, we are Homo sapiens, we are one little species. Somebody said to me the other day, who cares if a few frogs go extinct? Well, we're not talking about a few frogs, first of all, we're talking about 200 species. Over 200 species have disappeared from this earth. And out of those 200 is one most amazing frog, which is from our very backyard here in southeast Queensland, Australia. Let's look at the books. Let's look at the numbers. The number of amphibians that are declining or threatened by extinction are far greater than any of the other vertebrates. The mammals, the birds, the reptiles, the fish. The amphibians are right out there. 
They're the winners of the extinction race. Why? Are they trying to tell us something? We now have over 2,000 species out of the over 7,000 species that are threatened with extinction. So you might wonder, are we in the midst of the sixth mass extinction following the dinosaurs? If you are even thinking no, think again. 200 species gone, 2,000 species at risk. Why are they at risk? Habitat loss and fragmentation. We've been ranting and raving about this since the 60s, since I was a kid. We know what the cause is. How do we stop it? Vote for me as the next Prime Minister. I might be male, but I will say no more trees can be cut down in Australia. Disease is the next greatest threat to amphibians, and it's a new and a novel pathogen. It's a, a fungal pathogen. It's a fungus that kills frogs. It only kills amphibians, luckily. It doesn't kill mammals or birds or reptiles, yet. It's responsible for the extinction of many species and is linked to perhaps the greatest challenge of this century. Not perhaps, the greatest challenge of this century. Climate change. This is the scariest slide I've ever seen. It's the scariest slide I've got to show you today by any means. This is the latest projections on climate change that are about to be released in the next IPCC. So I managed to smuggle these out somehow. I will live to see a world that is two degrees warmer, I hope. I'm planning to live till 2040. I'd like to live at least that long. And if I do, I will see a two degree warmer world. That projection has come back from 2080 in the last report, only two or three years ago. We are on a roller coaster. My life has been a roller coaster. The earth is on a roller coaster. My children in this room are likely to see a four degree warmer world, and their children are likely to see a world that is somewhere between six and 10 degrees warmer. We're talking far worse than the Second World War here. We're not talking about millions of people dying. We're talking about millions and millions of people dying. We're talking about climate that is so catastrophic that the current climatologists have no way of predicting what is going to happen when we hit above two degrees, much less what's going to happen when we hit four or six degrees. This is truly the most terrifying slide I've ever seen. What's even scarier is all of those feedback loops, those negative feedback loops and the synergies between these factors. There's now mounting evidence that the disease that's killing frogs all around the world is linked to climate change. And so the two together are causing frog declines. So I'm going to give you a second fact. I'm going to give you three facts today. The second, the survival of frogs depends on humans. And I think I've pretty much demonstrated that by the previous slides. So how do we balance this? First of all, we have to change. You have to change. I have to change. Everybody has to do something about it. What can we do? We need to stop voting with our wallets. Clean air and clean water cannot be replaced by money. It's not negotiable. The future of the planet is not negotiable. It's not, it doesn't have a price. It needs to be fixed. We can do things ourselves. We can reuse, recycle, respect, and reduce our consumption. That'll help. And as individuals, there's lots of things we can do to reduce our impact, to reduce the amount of emissions going out into the atmosphere. But the choice is really in where you put your money. Are you willing to pay more for your electricity so that your grandchildren will have a climate that is bearable and livable? Or are you going to spend your money at the shopping centre? I've talked about metamorphosis and how I evolved out of this good-looking young fella into an old professor, but I want to relate that back to you 
and how you metamorphose and how you get into a job somewhere. You forget about that love of animals that you used to have as a child, but it comes back to you every time you decide where to go on holidays. The CEO of the biggest companies in Australia, where do they go for their holidays? Oh, well, they go to Bali, they go to exclusive resorts on tropical islands, they might go to rainforest retreats. They all go back to nature. And so we've got a circle of connectivity. Frogs, humans, and the Earth are all interrelated. It's a life cycle, almost like a life cycle. And so we get back to this, that when the 7,000 species of frogs disappear, then it's very unlikely that we're going to be around. That was just to wake you up. It's a local frog. So I'm going to leave you with three facts. The survival of the Earth depends on frogs. The survival of frogs depends on humans. And the survival of Earth depends on you. Save the frogs and you'll save yourselves. Thank you. <laughs>